Hey folks, I have been given a very exciting new 3D scanner from Rebel Point called the Miraco. In some ways, it's very similar to some of their other 3D scanners with one very big upgrade. It actually has built into it a computer and a screen. So this is what they're calling a standalone 3D scanner, meaning that you don't need it tethered to a computer in order to use it. This is on Kickstarter now, and there's a link in the description so you can check it out and get all of the details on it. And this video is actually sponsored by Revel Point. So clicking that link lets them know that people like you are engaging with it, and that helps me. Now it's October, so of course I wanted to take this opportunity with the new 3D scanner to do a project that I've been thinking about for a long time, and that is preserving a rotted pumpkin. There's just something about a wilted, deflated jack-o'-lantern that just screams Halloween to me. And I always wanted a really nice one as a prop to put out for the holiday. But having a real rotting pumpkin sitting on your porch is just gonna be kinda gross and impractical. So I wanted to have a realistic fake one. Now you could theoretically mold a real rotten pumpkin, but uh, it's mushy at the point where it looks really cool, and I think that's just going to create a mess. But with a 3D scanner, we can preserve that moment in time without actually having to touch the pumpkin itself. And then we can take that scan and 3D print a really nice replica of it. And so that's what we're going to do. I picked up a couple of pumpkins and carved them into basic jack-o'-lanterns. I figured it would be a good idea to have two to choose from since I wouldn't have a lot of control over the final look. I posted in my Instagram story that I was trying to make this rot quickly, and a lot of people had some really great ideas, so thanks to everyone who chimed in there. I ended up leaving it in the sun as much as possible with a space heater on the other side, and then I'd rotate it periodically to get all sides equally cooked. On day four, I had what I was looking for. You'll see all the uh, fruit flies helping out there. That's exactly what we're going to avoid by having a 3D printed version of this pumpkin instead. I liked this pumpkin better than the other one, so I brought it inside to scan. Now it's actually the day after I did my original scan that I'm getting the footage of me doing the scan. So the pumpkin here is considerably more rotten than it was the day that I did the scan that I'm actually going to be working with. But when I scanned it yesterday, I was able to prop the pumpkin up on that tall deli cup behind the pumpkin there so that I could scan a little bit of the underside. Normally, you could scan an object on one side and then turn it over and scan the other side and stitch them together in the software. But since the pumpkin is soft at this point, I knew that it would distort doing that and I wouldn't be able to actually match up those two scans. So I got as much as I could from this angle. I also stuck a small deli cup inside the pumpkin to hold it into the shape that I liked. I used this regular turntable so I could spin it by hand a little at a time and have better control over the speed and the movement. Scanning with the Morocco was super easy. It might seem like a small change to have the screen on the scanner itself, but I found it just made for a much improved experience over switching your gaze between the object you're scanning and the computer screen, which you can never get quite aligned into a convenient spot. The interface is exactly like the RevoScan software on the computer. You just have a power button and a start-stop scanning button on the unit, and then all the controls on the screen are the same. If you've ever scanned something where you had to have a friend hold your laptop in the air while you walk around the object with the scanner, then you understand what an improved experience it is to have it all in one like this. And the crazy thing is that there are very few 3D scanners, including the very, very expensive ones that actually offer a screen built in. And it's not just a screen, that's a whole computer inside of there. I know some people like to use the feature where you can connect your cell phone uh, to the scanner and the little handheld tripod on some of the you know other styles of scanners and um, scan that way. So you're kind of getting a similar Thing, but I found that the setup and connection process on that is just too much of a headache for me. 
um, this is all in one and ready to go. With the other Revo Point scanners, you'll usually attach a little tripod underneath them and then hold that in kind of a trigger grip. This is more like holding an SLR camera and I found it pretty intuitive. Now I have no idea what the price of this is going to be, but I think it's a safe bet that it's going to be more expensive than their other scanners. The scan quality though is comparable between this and the current lineup with similar specs. So if this added convenience of being all in one, isn't that important to you, you could totally get a different 3d scanner. Um, and you'd basically get the same results. What this is adding is kind of an experience, uh, convenience thing, but I'm probably going to be using this scanner for most of my medium and large object scans because it really is just very nice. I've learned from scanning things in the field that it's a good idea to make a backup scan or two of anything because you can't really tell how the details turn out until you finish processing it. So I did three scans of the pumpkin and chose the best one to work with. The other two had some overlap misalignment on the side and the bottom. I could have worked with either one of them, but it was nice to have this cleaner one to choose from. You can actually process the scans right on the device because it's basically running the same RevoScan program as the computer. But I sent the file over to the computer. It's just a RevoScan project file, and I processed it there. And this is what that looked like. I brought it into ZBrush and cleaned up what needed work, including sculpting the bottom. I usually increase the contrast on 3D scans to make the detail closer to what the original had since some detail is always lost. I also created a hollow inside since it wouldn't have really been possible to scan the inside of the pumpkin and then cut an open bottom so that I could add an LED candle. I 3D printed this in resin at about half the original size and then painted it with acrylics. An orange base, some yellow spatter, beige on the inside, browns and greens for the stem, and then a dark gray wash to make the detail pop and introduce some of that rot. I am so happy with how this turned out. I'm definitely going to be printing a full size one when I have time. And if you would like to print your own, I'll have a link in the description where you can purchase the file for a few bucks. Be sure to send me pictures if you make one. I want to thank RevoPoint for sending me the new Morocco and for sponsoring this project video. The Morocco has a lot of features that I didn't even touch on, including a second large format scanner that's built right in. So if you're interested, check out the Kickstarter link down below. And if you want to see more from me, I will also put my Instagram link in the description. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube if you like these kinds of projects, because I have a lot of exciting stuff coming up soon, including the long anticipated animatronic parrot kit. So stay tuned.